This matters more. I was at Costco with my kids and we got ice cream. Now you don't understand. This is a huge treat. This is not your everyday, oh, we just got no love. We got ice cream and they bought it with their money. And as they were eating the ice cream, I didn't get ice cream. Daddy's trying to stay away from things like that. But I don't mind taking a little tax from theirs. So they graciously, um, one of my daughters, whose name I won't mention, um, was, uh, <laughs> um, she, she saw Daddy with that one. She says, Daddy, here, you can have a scoop of mine. Aww. I said, that's so nice. I didn't even ask. <laughs> she dipped in another few seconds later. Here, Daddy, you can have another scoop. I said, why not? What's two scoops? It's, I'm not eating a whole cup. I got four girls. I can keep this going one at a time. There's a lot of scoops. And uh, I got used to it. So I went for a third. I said, hey, can I have another? She kind of hesitated. I said, okay, here you go. Now, the fourth time was different than the first and the second. Because the fourth time, I said, can I have another scoop? And she gave me a look. You know the look. The one where you realize I'm old enough to know what's happening. <laughs> My ice cream is not getting any taller. And I'll, she offered me, I said, can I have another one? She says, Daddy, you're going to eat all my ice cream. And I said, uh, okay, never mind. Never mind, don't worry. She said, no, 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 you're going to make me feel bad. I said, no, that's okay. You know how we go into the back and forth. Have you ever been offered something by someone, but it was done in a heart that wasn't so excited to do so? Here, you can have this. But uh, you knew it wasn't, I don't know, but the ice cream would have tasted differently. The thing would have been received different. The whole time while I'm trying to enjoy it, I remember the heart of the giver. And that brings me to our tour portion. Because as I'm reading, especially in those first few chapters, God called for materials for his temple. He said, I want everyone who has blue scarlet, everyone who has purple, everyone who has the gold, everyone who has the skills, I want you to bring them to me, but I don't want just everyone who has it. I want everyone who has it and has a willing heart. Willing heart. In, a certain, in, a, in a way, he was saying, I really don't need your stuff. I have plenty of it. But I want just the ones who got a willing heart. Was your heart stirred when we made the announcement? You know, when they sent out the email and says, more things are needed for the temple. Was your heart stirred? And we was like, oh, I get to give. I want yours. And I imagine they didn't have garages to store these things in. They didn't have places to put. One day God's going to ask for this. So, you know, I imagine they were probably using this stuff. It was probably on the table for the cloth where you eat. They had rings in their ear. The husband may have approached his wife looking at her with that look, and he, she was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what do you mean? Because this was never partitioned or dog-eared for the temple. It was like, oh, we're going to, yeah. Oh, those pants you just made, that cloth we were using. Though, can you imagine going through your home and starting to say, yeah, we can use that. Because it wasn't a box that said, to Yahweh. <laughs> it was just being used. I imagine how those conversations went from the husband and wife. Can we get that? No, we just, that's some good cloth. I know, that's why I want to use it. But uh, uh, he says, no, 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 it's okay. No sin, just a willing heart. And the wife said, oh, we need your toolbox. And your <laughs> 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 you got some that's what it is, a little bit more than they have. You're like, look, we can keep playing this. You got stuff, we got stuff. But I'm trying to get into the minds of what happened there. They were probably using this stuff. I'm learning, and I was so sober, that the heart matters way more to God than any of the stuff that we can give him. So it says, And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which Yahweh commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to Yahweh. Whoever is of willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to Yahweh. Gold, silver, bronze, it goes on. Why did our father ask 
only for those with a willing heart. Because they're being the wholehearted ones that want to believe him no matter what. He didn't, he didn't want us to hold back from him because he's all into us, but we should be all into him, and that's what he told me for. Mm. Amen. Amen. Jay? Well, it's kind of like the, uh, God's going to be number well, one. <laughs> You're getting around to it. Mm. I might be or not. Somebody, there's another plan for it. Mm. But if he's number one, truly number one, mm -hmm. I want him to have it. Mm. And that's where it's not that I have to, I should have. Mm -hmm. Yep. Listen to the heart of our Father who says, Keep your stuff. I want your heart. I got plenty of stuff, but give it to me wholeheartedly. Why does he ask for those with a willing heart? Because to Yahweh, the heart matters. Yep. It matters to him. Um, in Hebrews, it tells us that his, our heart matters. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Some translation says it judges the thoughts and attitudes of your heart. In most countries in this world, the judicial system will judge you based on what you do. Our God says, before you even done, I'm looking at your heart. I'm looking at your mind. I'm wondering what, but I didn't do anything. But you were thinking about it. <laughs> I'm innocent. He says, you've murdered. Murdered? You're still angry with your brother? You've coveted. What? Are you still desiring that which doesn't belong to you? I'm judging your heart. But I did nice things. He says, I'm judging the intentions. God concerned about the heart, not our things. Can the same action be deemed both good and bad? Here's what I mean. I'm going to go and serve the poor. Good or bad? Well, it depends on your heart. Oh, depends. I'm going to go help this person with a chair because they need some help. We played this game before we got to Sabbath with my kids, and I said, give me both sides. Somebody give me how it could be wrong or how it could be right. I'm going to help. This person needs a chair to sit down. Some of the examples they got could have been evil. He says, yeah, but I hope it breaks when they sit down. <laughs> see, you can't see that. I can't see that. But God says, that heart right there will curse you. But I'll help them with their chair. Yeah, but your heart. Another heart says, I hope they never have to stand and wear themselves out. Another heart says, man, I'm just doing it. I just, I never forget the story. I told this before, the five-year-old girl in, um, in, in school, five or six-year-old, the teacher kept telling her, it was Sunday school. She, sit down, Susie, sit down. I told you to sit down. They got the strong voice and everything. They doing everything. Susie's just defiant. And finally, Susie finds her a seat because she's threatened. I'm going to go tell your parents. I'm going to go get them out the congregation. I'm, I'm, I'm. So she just takes a seat. Hmm. She says, I'm sitting down on the outside, but on the inside, I'm standing up. <laughs> and, and I wonder sometimes, do we think we're fooling God? Yes. When we say, I'm sitting down on the outside, but God says on the inside, and God says, I can see on the inside you're standing up. I saw when you brought me that gift to the temple, I saw your heart. I don't need your stuff. It's your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, another example of the good and bad intentions at once is people who uh, bring a camera crew or, or, or rip out their, their video, their, their cell phones to video themselves while they're giving someone something. 
Well, yeah. I'm giving this $200 tip to this waitress here because they're wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That, that's, that shows the heart. There's a whole... Oh, not me, not you. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole group, a whole movement. <laughs> Talk about not letting your right hand, left hand. It's like... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. That that verse really came alive to me. It's like last time I was with Israel, a friend of mine was giving me two hundred dollars to bless someone in Israel there. And so I'm going down to the um to the western wall and there's this old lady that that's like just barely, you know, making it down. Um I was coming back up and she was coming down. My friends were already up there. And the Spirit said, give it to her. And and so my friends were waiting. And then I got up there and I told my friends, I have to go back and, and give this lady that money. And so I, I went to give it to her. And she said, young sweetheart, put it in your other hand. And so there's something about putting it in your left hand because um, your right hand is like, you know, um, it, it's a different connotation to it. So that was an idiom that we don't even know was an idiom. Right. And so what that means is that you don't even know how much you're giving because you just like grab a bunch out of your purse and give it. Very good. Never heard that. It was such a blessing. She said she gave it to her. I was just like, oh, I have to go back down there. I'm sorry to make those ladies. You know, and it was a blessing when I found her. I was like, you know. Hugging her until my eyes, you know, were giving me a second chance. Yeah, yeah, and the and that and that's the heart, right? What a blessing to give. Oh, this is so cool! I caught her, you know. So this goes, Jay. To the guy that likes the video and stuff, give it out. Just like give it to others. Good. You talking to me? Oh, to that guy. Oh. Okay, I thought because my camera was going, I was like, is that a nudge at me? <laughs> to the guy. <laughs> Something that they're trying to build themselves up with may be a good example for somebody else to say, I need to do that too. Maybe they won't feel the same. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, good point. And, 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 and it's hard for us to judge that, right? Like, we can see that, but God says, no, you don't know their heart. They may be doing it for that. Like, I'm trying to help. I don't know, right? But there's a lot of people who aren't, who are really trying to, uh, but God's looking at our hearts. James says it this way. He talks about wisdom. What can look wise on the outside may not be wise. Who is wise and understanding among you? I'm looking for hands. Come on now. Some, you guys are wise. Y'all know the word. We've all got a certain amount of wisdom. Yeah. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of his wisdom. But if you, heart, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. He says no matter what this wisdom you're doing, if, you, if this is in your heart, you self-seeking, envious, ambition, don't, don't lie about that. This wisdom does not descend from above, but it's earthly, sensual, demonic. I mean, some language, some language comes out that really like, oh, the money? Yeah, if you're doing anything because you're envy and you're selfish, and, but I was helping the poor and I wanted to, but I was teaching the word. And he's got to say, I see your heart. What was it? Who was that? Cornelius, the guy, the, the guy was trying to pay for the ax. What was his name? It wasn't Cornelius. It was, uh, it was another guy who was trying to pay for this uh, power that um, Peter had. Yeah, and he says what, and he 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 rebuked him for that. It was it Simon the sorcerer? Yeah, he says no, no, don't come with that. Self-seeking. If you get nothing else, what I've been sober by and doing this lesson is check your heart on everything, because God's checking it. You may be thinking I'm gonna check this box. God's checking it for where envy and self-seeking exist. Watch this confusion. And every evil thing are there like, what in the world? We opened up a whole box. Yeah, because your heart's not right, he says. 
No, I'm, I'm doing great things. I'm in a church. I'm in his donation. I'm doing charity. I'm doing, he says, no, you're, you're selfish and you're, you're looking at ambition. Some stuff are obvious, but it can be hidden in some good things. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality or without hypocrisy. Notice that none of these things are things you can hold in your hand, Jay. I'm sorry, you can't weigh, you can't weigh out how much gentleness you got. How many ounces of gentleness is that? How much partiality? With how, how good, are, how, full of mercy, how much mercy you got? God is like, I'm wearing your heart. It doesn't matter if it's a coat or a sock or a buck. Or I'm looking at the heart to determine how good this is. The condition of the heart determines the acceptance of the gift, the acceptance of the service. Thank you. That's it. It doesn't matter how much. Okay, I'm getting set ahead of myself. But remember this. The condition of the heart determines the acceptance of the service. It's your heart. I have some blue scarlet. Yeah, but you were grudging it. You didn't want to give that to me because you was going to, yeah, take that back. I only want willing. I'm building my temple here. I only want the willing. Without the right heart, it doesn't matter. Corinthians tells us about love saying, you can speak in all kinds of tongues. Does it matter? Yes. Get who? Yeshua. He could do that? He's the only one that can turn your heart. Strangely. Yeah. How do we practice? How do we pray? How do we serve? This issue is called everyday prayer. All the time. You're turning around and you want to do something good. But yet, at the same time, this other way of looking at it, then it's like, yeah, I've got to know the Lord. Yeah. By doing this. And I think there's a, in this instance, in in this whole portion, you know, you only got the second paragraph there, you got to to your point. I mean, you could (coughs) give that. They wanted to serve God, Mm -hmm. not somebody else. Mm -hmm. They didn't look for a plaque on the wall, they didn't want. On the back, they didn't want any. They just wanted to serve God. Mm. How can we practice wanting to serve God by doing this? Yeah. You know, one way would I mean that I'm coming off the top of my head. I mean, first of all, he had to know Scripture too, because mm. Scripture is pretty clear. But you know, every time you want to do something or you have this desire to serve the poor or something, you could ask yourself um, as a reminder, am I doing this because I really want to serve God or because I want to be seen or because it will make me feel better or something else besides, I just want to do this because I want to do God's work. Mm-hmm. Yeshua would do this kind of thing. I want to do what he did. Yeah. Just remind yourself. It, it could be a feeling that you don't know. do it in front of everybody. Yeah. And you may get a lot of praise and stuff, but that's never what you did it for. Right. Yeah. But you so trying to serve God and not yourself on this. And that's the same as practicing serving God on that. And if it's a situation to where you can tell a lot of people, so what? So you're answering your question? Well, it, I thought it was going to take too long to get an answer. Because <laughs> I wouldn't go to try- There's too many <coughs> smart people in here. I was like, that's great. You know, practice it. It's going to start with just putting it to work, practicing it. You mentioned what I'm thinking of as the power of pause. 
which is like I'm going to wait, I'm going to pause and say, ask, question my heart. Where's my heart right now in this? That's one thing I've had to do, honestly, when I've been looking at this, because you get into a routine, and we can call it religion, <laughs> and we can start doing certain things, but we're like, hold on, where's my heart? Am I on a get to or got to right now? Because sometimes, can I be honest, I've done things because I got to do them. And it hasn't been moved from my, I get to go, like, no, let's be honest, Brandon, you're doing it because you got to do that. And you're doing a service. But I wonder if God's looking at your heart and says, are you willing or are you just getting it done? Um, so I have, just making sure I pause and say, where is my heart? I might, I might run into that. Uh, my girls, bless their beautiful hearts. They, they love to serve. You know, when they're kids, they just think, they think cleaning up is sometimes the thing. Like, hey, this is great. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad y'all think that's great. Um, so it's time to sweep the porch. Can I do it? Yeah. Um, they're rushing to figure out who can sweep it. And I ain't saying nothing. I'm just like, they excited about it. Let's, let, let's ride this thing out. We're in, a, we're in a wash dishes phase right now. So they're fighting. Why, when am I going to get to wash dishes? It's coming. Don't worry about it. They're eager. They want to do it. What a heart that blesses. <laughs> Matter of fact, we were we were, we were driving, right, Olivia? We, we, what's that, Rena? <laughs> we were driving by and we saw um, what had to be maybe a 70, 80 year old woman, right, breaking her leaves in the, in on, on our street. You remember that, Olivia? We saw this. I said, "Oh my God, what?" And and I forgot we had to come some. We had to be somewhere. I'm like, "No, this can't be. We gotta. If she's out there, if that thing's not done, whatever, we're gonna come back." But they was like, "Can I go?" And when we got home, she wasn't out there. She's like, can we go run down there now? She had already finished the thing. I'm like, man, that must have taken it. It was a lot of leaves. But their heart is like, I want to go. Can we go knock on the door? And she, they want to go knock on the door. I'm like, look, everybody's not qualifying for that service. But their heart is, I want to serve. What a childlike heart. Where did he get that from? Um, yeah. A tinker did go started for a purpose. But because they were big enough to do anything, she has been going once a week. In a church setting, of all things, you know, which some people would judge, but that process Mm -hmm. is there about Jesus. Mm -hmm. How can I help? That's their attitude. They they could spot that when they thought they were a little bit. Mm -hmm. Aren't we? Amen. Really are. He might have come that way. Amen. Amen. Three seconds backed up one slide. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Three seconds left. Good. Thank you. Uh, Brandon, for your question a while ago, I was just going to say we become like the people we're around. So, you know. That's another one. <laughs> Sorry. I think sometimes uh, we don't spend enough time in the presence of our Father. Mm hmm. See, see what we just did there? That's what you guys said. Yep. My mailbox and trash can is not right outside of my door. I have to go down the driveway and up the road to the mailbox to run down to the trash to the dumpster. Same thing with her. I had my trash on a walker, and I was walking down there, getting ready to turn onto the road. This little boy was... He stopped and he just, he said, oh, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to the mailbox to take this on to the trash. He said, off your bike and come over. And he said, do you mind if I get your trash for you? Oh, oh yes, yeah, please. And I, I mean, I wanted to cry. Mm. <laughs> Such a good heart he had. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I share something funny. Uh, if I say, can I put these in it? A good friend of mine had already gone up to Amarillo because her husband was in a nursing home up there and was suffering so bad. And uh, uh, actually, she was in the nursing home. Uh, anyhow, he took me to Amarillo uh, because I asked him. And he was so kind and so sweet. And here's this young man, you know, that took out of the Navy. And... Uh, 
that she said he's so happy. And he said, it takes so little to raise an elderly person up. Yep. And that was, you know, him taking a whole day out of his busy schedule yeah. to take me up there. And he said, it takes so little. Yeah. And uh, they learned that from him. Amen. Amen. And it makes a difference, Miss Dottie, if that person takes you. You can tell if somebody takes you because they have to versus if they get to. Okay, are you ready? Are we okay? Can, can you come? Can, <laughs> you, you can tell if it's a, and you're like, oh man, I get to. Hey, do you want to go anywhere else? Can you do anything? It's different. I was telling my kids this other day, same thing for parents, you know, is your kids can blow the socks off. There's nothing your kids can buy you. Like, what you gonna buy me, at least at this age, you know? What you gonna get me? What you gonna. But the fact that they come to me with these big eyes saying, Daddy, look what I help. This is going to help you. Like, you want, you're thinking about me as a father. I'm like, I don't really care about the paper itself or the thing you made or the kite that don't quite fly. <laughs> you know, I don't care about those. It's the fact that you took the time and you thought about me. That's priceless. <clears throat> as I told my daughter this story, she says, why doesn't God just make us, why didn't he just make us obey everything? You know, thinking about Adam, why is it? And then I said, because we'll be robots. You know, we'll be programmed robots. And we need the opportunity to show love so that you can have the opportunity to opt in or opt out. And that's my point is like, wow, you opted in to try to do. Ah, that I can't find in any store. No Walmart, no Costco. Will, I can buy that and say, I'm going to do something for you. So that willingness is beautiful. So it doesn't matter if you can speak in tongues. You may know all kinds of languages. It sounds good. There are some things I'm putting up here that the scriptures talk about because God says, I want the heart. It looks good on the spiritual, religious, pious kind of level. But he says, though I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I've become, I've become sounding brass or a clang. It's just nothing. It's a heart. What is, and the, and, uh -huh. what is the tongues of angels? I don't know. Don't don't get me off on that. <laughs> and though I, but even if you can do that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the good thing, Mel, is that that really ain't that important if you ain't got no love. And though I have the gift of prophecy, I can tell you what's going to happen in 2027. This is going to, it's going to, you got this prophecy. You can preach. You can prophesy. You can, and maybe you can. Maybe it's a gift. But you have no love, it's nothing. And understand all the mysteries. Are you, is your IQ out of this world? Are you able to unravel the mysteries of life and say, man, I can get this in ways that researchers and say, so he said, doesn't matter. Your heart doesn't even love. Disqualify. This is the one thing that would disqualify every single gift you got is a, is, is a wrong heart. In the Olympics, I never forget, if you jump the gun in a race, they give you two chances. Yeah. Top. And then you get in the Olympics, you get one chance and you're done you've been practicing for ye four years or more pop having the wrong heart will disqualify every single quote-unquote good gift and though i have all faith so that i can remove mountains but i have no love i am nothing i got faith like you couldn't believe but you're disqualified your love isn't there you don't love people you're hateful you're bitter angry you're murderous in your heart so he says disqualified <coughs> but you're faithful how can that be i don't even know i don't think that's the point the point is love and your heart condition is that important what if you're good with words and you speak and you pray and you oh my your eloquence and you and you can just pray somebody under the table just pray he says doesn't matter i see you daddy um hypocrites well, did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth. Talking. But what was his concern? Honor me with their lips, their hearts. See, I only want the gifts of those whose hearts are stirred and willing. Did you show up today because your heart was stirred and it was willing? Did you buy what you want to buy? Did you talk to who you was going to talk to because your heart was like, oh, I just want to give. He says, forget the check boxes. I want a heart that's willing and desiring. 
this challenge me. I'll tell you what, because it makes you stop and relook at everything because we get into a routine. And we'll deny ourselves and <laughs> yeah, but he says, I want a willing heart. Um, Dolly, sorry. Just gonna say a couple of things because the more kids we expose to the world, it seems like the more they have to keep checking their phone. Because, you know, their ability um, that they always tell the truth but they refuse to tell the truth. And we had a study we had a saying in Central Air when I was a teacher. The kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think we could use that in our faith. Until people know how much you care, it doesn't matter how much you know. Right. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. And you talked about gifts masking it. It can be harder, right? Because when think of a kid and an adult, those get really good at masking things. Kids, you can really see... You know, uh, Zoya has this thing that she does all the time. When I come in a room, she look at me. I'm not doing anything suspicious. <laughs> she, she just, she's being silly about it. But the truth is, kids are terrible about masking what their hearts are. But as we adults, we learn, and so yeah, we have to be careful. Um, Diligently studying the Bible doesn't matter. Do you love studying the Bible? Great, but it doesn't matter. If your heart's are wrong, you know, the Pharisees got in trouble with that. He says, you search the scriptures for in them, you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing. You're not willing. You're not willing to come. But I'm reading the Bible. I'm studying. I know the scriptures. I know. I know the Greek. I know the Hebrew. I know the lexicon, the numbers and, that, and nothing's wrong. But he says, your heart has to start first. I know the traditions. I know the Jewish this and that. He says, yeah, but you're not willing to come to me. You want to stay with you. You want to keep doing what you've been doing for a long time because you've gotten used to it and you know how you... Come to me, Yeshua is saying. Stop going with you, that you may have life. I do not receive honor from men. We were talking about that a second ago with the pick I don't receive honor. But I, but I know you, that you do not have the what? How is it possible? Well, is it possible to diligently study the scriptures and still have no love of God in you? I think that is it. I was treated the best. The scriptures were treated the best. Caiaphas. Caiaphas. Oh, thank you. The judge, Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he wasn't, he was a Levi, was he? So I think it was all messed up by then. His father's writing him. So this, I'm sharing all this because keep in mind that though we can look at the world, the nation, the people outside of all these scriptures are getting really close to home <laughs> because they're talking about religious people, men and women like us who speak, who have faith, who do all these things. He says, even you're still in the scripture, he says, but the love of God isn't there. I only want willing gifts. Jay. Okay. Fasting doesn't matter. <laughs> If the heart isn't right, man, come on, fast. And truly, that, that's the one right there. You got to recognize it. Not that, even if you don't have the right heart there, we know the scripture. Why have we fasted? <laughs> they like, I don't get it. We fasted. Like, you, you missed it? They said, and you have not seen. Why have we afflicted our souls? And you take no notice. In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your labors. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of weakness. You would not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. God says, I can care less about your... Man, it's hard to say those words. I don't care about your fasting. We are forgiven ourselves that your heart's not right. And I appreciate all of our hearts who are always talking about, hey, if I'm wrong to anyone, I want to make sure, you know, uh, Burley was here last time talking about Passover is coming. I want to get things... God is looking at our hearts. He's not into even our prayers, our sacrifices, or our Sabbaths. He says, that's just stuff you guys are doing for check boxes if your heart's not there. Right? To what purpose is a multitude of your sacrifices to me? This is Yahweh speaking, by the way, because this gets kind of strong. Don't, don't look at me. <laughs> this is what he said. He says, Yahweh, I have had enough of burnt offerings. I'm good on all your offerings. I'm good on all that stuff. 
of rams and the fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or the lambs of goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? We didn't trample. We was coming in to give it. No, I look at it as trampling because your hearts, you can do the same action. And from God's perspective, it looks totally different. I was just coming in to give it. No, you was trampling on my courts. Why is your heart's not in the right place? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. Ugh. I thought that was our prayer. It's an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies, sometimes there's groups that are in the Torah observant that hang their hats on this. I did the new moon. I did the Sabbath. I did the, the, I did the, the. he says, watch it. Right? Don't major in minors. We're getting stuck in the thick of thin things, he says. He says, love, mercy, and justice. I cannot endure iniquity. It's iniquity here in the sacred meeting. Is there iniquity in our hearts? Is there iniquities in our community? He says, I want to deal with that, not just the religion, not just checking off things. Your new moons and your opponent feasts, my soul hates. This is Yahweh speaking to who? Babylon. Rome. Israel. Mm. He says, I have a message for my people. I know you have a message for the world, but I got a message for my people that there is sin here and you're trying to get, hang your hats on things that you've gotten caught up doing. My tassel's this long. I got this day. You got the wrong calendar. You got this. The, what's, what translation is that? He's like, look, where's your love? I hate, my soul hates the stuff y'all doing with these feasts. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will. Why? Because your hands are full of blood. I didn't kill anybody. You still angry with your brother? Your hands are full of blood. <laughs> so, what heart should we have? Not that one. What heart should we have? Read it, please. <laughs> he does that on purpose. That's, that's good. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came. Who? Who had stuff? No, no, no. Not just who had it. Who had stuff and whose heart was stirred. My heart was moved. I got excited when I heard it's time to give to the temple. <gasps> we get to honey. Oh, can you imagine husband and wife lighting up at the thought of get that stuff. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get everything we need. I get goosebumps thinking about that. He says, I want those people, everyone whose spirit was willing. I, I didn't pull out all the scriptures, but it repeats this over and over and over again. It says men. It says women. It says children. It kept on going. Willing. I want willing. And they brought Yahweh's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, for all its service, and for the holy garments. They came, both men and women. What a beautiful sight that must have been. I'm thinking as a father. For my children to come to me willingly, not because daddy has to. Is it daddy's birthday? Is it Father's Day? Is it time? No, daddy, I just thought of you, and they're coming. They came, both men and women, as many had a willing heart. Jay, uh, Tom. Came on the guitar and a little change, and he 
didn't even look at me. He just assumed you all got the same thing. Well, if you think that that was right, that that was the case, well, then the other car comes along possibly a little later. Might have been a Datsun or Datsun and runs us down and possibly a Kia if you're driving that bad. And I come over to that car and said, we're ready for Michael to deal with you. Would y'all like some gifts? And they're digging in the ashtray and looking <laughs> under the seat. And they're looking every home they can. They're just so happy to get a few coins to put in that boot to give to you. And uh, that just, it had my heart touched. And, and it showed me, you know, a pretty good lesson right there. Wow. About a willing heart. That's beautiful. I wasn't going to share this because, uh, Olivia, can I share this story on our way here? What we so we was on our way here. And in in, I'm sorry, Jay, did you have your hand up? We was on our way here, and our kids are we're teaching them to put aside money for tithe. And every time I, we get so much money a month, I say, hey, here's an envelope. You put aside this. So they have that money now. And Olivia, before we came, she said, can you give me my envelope for tithe? Because she said, just take it out for me. I love it. Just take it out for me and put it aside and give me the rest. So she brings her envelope today, and on the way, you may have seen it, depending on where you come, somebody was raising money for a six-year-old, sound like they um, um, died prematurely from an accident, and they were needing help for their funeral. They had a mom always stops, and she wrote a winner down, I want I want a gift. I want, can I give him my, she had a dollar to give. I want to give him my dollar. And that was all she had to give. She's like, I want to give him my dollar. And the guy had walked too far away. She didn't want to yell at him to, to ask, but she was like, oh, I want, you know, I want to give. But for me as a father, that was the pride. That was the goal. I was like, that's it. That's it. We see a need. I have something set aside for you. I didn't know this point was going to come up, but I have it for you. And I'm so, when you set aside something for someone, it's exciting to give it. As opposed to, this wasn't for you, now I have to. You're like, no, this was for this purpose. So it reminds me of that story. Willing hearts. Yeah. Whatever it is you just had on your wizard tool, you know, I've got the old ball hammer that's older than I am. And you got a brand new one. And, and somebody needs one. If I'm going to give them that old one, I'm going to give them that new one. That's, that's another yeah. level. Yeah. I don't even have the old one. That's a good one. <laughs> it has a spirit now, don't you? want the book? Yeah. I told you the story about the kid who was always giving, this reminds me of my Sunday days too, a quarter to keep and a quarter to put in church. I told you that story. So he's walking home. He's walking home. And as kids do, your little boy, he's flipping that coin. And that coin hits the ground. And as coins do, take that fancy roll. And it rolled itself right down the nearest gutter. <laughs> he looked up quickly with the last coin in his hand. Sorry, God, I lost your quarter. <laughs> and earlier, Jay was saying, how do you train? How do you train your heart? Okay. <clears throat> there was a member in my family. They was feeling a little stingy. And the person on the corner, and I said, well, I think we'll give them a can of soda. Okay. And Ray, wow. <laughs> you didn't want to give up that can of soda. <laughs> We're teaching him. But he, he, I rolled his window down and he gave it to the guy. <laughs> and, uh, you can't uh, offer somebody else's stuff. And, you and, offered his stuff. And I said, <laughs> if, 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 if you can't do it with a good attitude, then drive back around and give him another can of soda. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> You can't offer somebody else's stuff. <laughs> we should tie those shoes. You gotta teach them. It's a learning curve. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand at our house there's there's his rules to help as Corbin rules. That's funny. All right, so we see this we see this heart that Yahweh wants in Deuteronomy 15. He says, is there among you a poor man or brethren within any of your gates in your land, which Yahweh your God has given you? You shall not what? Harden your heart. 
He wasn't necessarily just talking about your money. He's watching your what? He says, I'm looking at your heart. I wonder sometimes if he gives us situations in our midst. Again, we're not talking about other communities. We're not talking about other countries. And other. He says, in your gates. I wonder if he gives us a setup to see what our hearts are. It's not even about the money. Dollar, ten, hundred, whatever. I just want to see if your heart's going to harden. Excuse me, can I, you know, I'm in a, whatever it is. He says, don't harden your hearts or shut your hand from your poor brother, but shall open your hand wide and willingly lend to him sufficient for his needs, whatever he needs. I'm telling you the truth. When I read that, it, hurt, it hit something in me. <laughs> I had all kinds of questions and they're like, hold on. Willing. I can give, but God says, I'm not want you just giving. I need your heart to not be hard and you to be willing. Whatever he needs. Sufficient for what he needs. Whatever the guy needs, that could be a whole lot. Okay, yeah. Doc, <laughs> it was on Ray's side of the car. It wasn't on my side. <laughs> yeah, he trained it. Brandon was standing. He, it was, Brandon was in the middle of the aisle, of the intersection of gate. He, the guy I drove by was standing on Ray's side of the window. <laughs> he's training Ray so that when the guy's on his side, oh, you know what? Hold on, we're he's learning. Well, I don't know yeah, if he's learning. And look, look, he's still going on about this. It's a hard issue with God. It's not a money issue. It's not a giving issue. It's not a stuff issue. He says, beware, lest there be a wicked thought in your heart. I'm watching your heart. Saying, the seventh year, the year of Jubilee is at hand, and your eye be evil against your brother, and you give him nothing. And he cry out to Yahweh against you. Oh, have mercy. He says, if that brother cries out against you, <clears throat> and it become a sin among you, you shall surely give to him and your heart. Why does he keep talking about hearts? I gave him some money. He says, I want your heart. And your heart should not be grieved when you give. Have you ever given something and been grieved in giving? I'll volunteer and say yes. It felt like buyer's remorse. It's like, that. Oh, that's not good. And I'm not saying we, I'm not going to the extreme of saying whenever there's an opportunity to give, I give everything. Not that. But there are opportunities, he's saying, when you need to check your heart and not just make it about the things. Because for this thing, Yahweh your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand. He says, I'm going to bless you if you do this. There you go, Jay. I had to put it in. I heard you say it, so I had to put it in my slides. It's not what we got to do. It's what we get to do. This is the attitude we need to have. I'm reminded of David who so badly wanted to do what for God? He so badly wanted to. He really did. Well, he got to do a little bit more. What did he do? <laughs> good point. Good point. He had a son. But you know what he didn't do? Thank you. He didn't get on the ground and throw a grown man temper tantrum. I did all this for you, but you, you know, I've done it. So I, I want it. He says, you know what? I'm still excited. I can't give the way I want to give. No, you can't. Why? Wow, it's too much blood in your hands. Well, if I can't give the way I want to, then pfft, I try to give you something. He says, no, no, no. I still got a heart. He said in Chronicles, moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, have given to the house of my God over and above. Ooh. He said, God, you say this much. He gave the boy blueprints. He gave the boy all the stuff he did. And then he says, if that wasn't enough, I went over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold right. and silver. Yeah. It sounds like it. <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot before. Now, if you read it before, He's setting up a serious, I don't, want to, I don't want to say insurance policy, but he's setting up a, a great plan for his son to come. He's setting him up, but, he, but he's excited about his willingness to want to give. He says, I got your 10%, 20 whatever it is, whatever you wanted me to give, but I got some special treasure of gold and silver. I'm exceeding because my heart. Yes. So the people who brought the, I got you, he brought the blue and the purple and stuff. He says, I know that's what you needed, but there's some other stuff that I really got to give you too because it's going to be so good. I didn't even ask for that. I know that's the best part. 
is that you didn't even ask. Um, yeah. Now, that was David's endowment to his boy. Okay. Mm. okay. He was going to, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Next story. <laughs> now, therefore, our God, we thank you. How sh what's the attitude should we have? We get to. So David was able to go on and say, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I? David understood that it, it was not an uh, uh, obligation. It was an opportunity. He says, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to even so willingly be able to offer this, that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? Who am I that I get to give like this? Who are we that we get to give to God? And God accepts and says, that was beautiful. That smells like a beautiful one. I get to give? Oh, what a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you know that, and then from time to time we don't have those employees, but that's all they want. I just need more money. I just want more. You know, I'll work mm -hmm. harder if I get more. I'm like, okay, you're not working hard now. I don't want you. And that's the same thing we're looking at it from a other direction. Right. Good point. I just let that marinate. That we get to. David understood. You know, going back to your job analogy, I get to have this opportunity to show up and prove myself. I, I told some students I was speaking to, I said, your last task was your next resume. Okay, I'm going to slow that down. The last thing you did was your resume for your next thing. People are looking at your resume of things that you just did. Oh, you thought I'm going to do it when I get paid. No, no, no. I'm watching you. And I said, oh, there's his resume. I just created a spreadsheet for this company that uh, I'm certified through with emotional intelligence. I created it because I, I thought it helped me. I thought it was so fabulous. I sent it to the CEO of the company who's over this worldwide, this worldwide company. He says, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. I'm not asking him for no money, but it's my resume. In case you, he says, I didn't know you could do this. He says, you're a whiz at this. I said, oh, man. He said, can you add this? I said, no problem. Du -du 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 -du. Boom, bam. Oh, wow. He says, can we set up a webinar for you uh, next month about and teach this? Some? We're talking to the CEO who's of a worldwide company. I'm not asking you for anything. Back to your point, Jay. But I promise you, when you need someone, I, that was my resume. Some people were waiting to fill out the resume. No, no, no. I'm working my resume as I live, and God is watching. He, said, he says his eyes, right, uh, Mel? I, I think of you when I think it, because you might know this scripture. He says his eyes roam throughout the earth, searching for whose heart who can, he can empower and strengthen. This is in Chronicles somewhere. I never remember where it is. <clears throat> but he's looking for somebody who already posted their resume. Not for somebody saying, bless me first, and then I'll show up for you. He says, no, no, no. I'm watching for whose heart. This guy that went deeper into his pockets that he didn't have, he didn't have to do. And he says, there's a heart right there. So excited. Are you excited like that to give? Not grudgingly, but because you have to. Right? We know this. So let each one, of, each one give as he purposes in his heart. This is how we should give. Not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Man, you, how you? <laughs> she was quiet. <laughs> that was good. I don't know. I don't know how you. How did you know this was coming, Leah? Just spoke it. Uh, when a free will request was made, what happened? 
bountiful. You don't, he says, you're not in sin. You don't have to do this, guys. Whatever you want to bring, those bring. What happened? Oh, that gets me excited. Exodus 36, and they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel have brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continue bringing, they continue bringing to him free will, free will offerings every morning. That's another morning, not next week, not next week. He's like, I got another morning. We get, we get to then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing. Every one of the people at their job said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not just the carpenter, not just the seamstress, not just the... Everybody came to Moses and spoke to him and said, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which Yahweh commanded us to do. Mm. And it was as of this. Mm -hmm. There was plenty for everybody. Mm. A lot of work got done. Mm. And, you know, everybody got along. Yeah. <coughs> and it was a bountiful time. I like that. You know what I love about that setting, Jay, is that the reason that doesn't happen in some places is because everyone's looking at the next person hoping they don't give more than you. I ain't giving more than that person. They, they look what they brought. I ain't look. I ain't bringing that. I'm, like you said, I'm just doing this for God. If I get the chance to just bring it to God, if everybody's doing that, nobody's looking over the fence to see, you only gave that much. No, I'm not committing that. You only, I'm just going to give as much as I give. Mm -hmm. So Moses gave a commandment, and they caused it to proclaim throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman do any more work of the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing stuff. They were restrained. Stop it, guys. Stop it. Send out the message. This just makes me be tickled that you have to stop God's people from giving because they're so excited to give to the temple. Stop. God, stop, stop, stop. We got too much stuff. For the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, it was too much. What if? I love these what ifs. I like to ask hypotheticals. They're fun. My girls like to play them. I learned that adults like to play these too. But what if the same free will request was made today to build God's temple? Just having fun. I know you. somebody's going to say, but well, technically this and that. But just have fun with me. What if? That request was emailed to us. And it says, God's temple. I mean, no, okay, don't, don't mess it up by anything the political or the you don't have this right. I'm just saying, what if? What would happen? What would happen if that request was made? Will God's people show up in the same way? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's got to be. For sure. I would. Goes in my spam folder. <laughs> well, what about the Temple Institute in Israel? They've already done this. They didn't send me an email. Huh? They didn't. I, I said they didn't send me an email. I would have. There is a request out right now that a young man, John Parsons, who's a few roots of Christian, he's a young man. He's like raising three little boys, and he's very profitable what he makes from what he puts on the Facebook and stuff with the Christian the Hebrew organization, and he's asking for help. For? And it takes a lot for a person to do that, because they don't want enough. For help for what? For oh, to live. To live. Just a, he wrote to the Hebrew organization. Oh, okay. He has a wonderful website, and what is a full-time ministry, and last year is like COVID, I don't know. John Parsons. Gotcha. 
the mathematical bean counter said six million Jews come out, how much money it cost for the temple, mathematically it was $68, okay, per family. And you said weekly, weekly, weekly. So if that was $11, $5, $4, $11, but it was $68. So if everybody pitched in and did their part today, you saying today, it ain't fault. Amen. Yeah. But the prophet said that all of us have been in churches where it's not so much, I think, in our church, but churches I've been in the past will have 20% of the people that do it, 80% of the work. <coughs> and we don't want that to happen in our church. Yeah. It's a, it's a truth that goes on. Yep. Giving out of your checkbook or giving out of your pocket or giving something in your <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's pretty easy, actually, mm -hmm. to give out of your time. Mm -hmm. When you give your time, like we do, on that, and you turn around and you're thinking, because you are, as kind of Tom said, you're only given kind of so many days to live. And you're going to take some of those days and you're going to give it for somebody, some things, and not just throw a dollar at it or whatever, just something material, just, you know, here, fill the boots, get on, you know, don't bother me anymore. But when he stood out there all day, he put his time in it. Yes. Putting your time in it is something that you will never get back. Your time. Right, absolutely. So, those that are willing to be involved, not just materially, right, but with their <clears throat> to help share, and that was the fun thing about the Sukkot trip. The ladies that they cooked, they brought food, they prepared it. We went down to a job. That was you know, let's go get that done. <laughs> well. We had fun to eat. We had time to, and that was, you know, unexpected. Right. When that point made it. Clear. I love it. Yeah. So. Thank you. Time. And yeah, it could be material. It could be immaterial, and sometimes, like you say, this immaterial is more. And I, I want, I want to use that to go to the one my next place again. Thank you for this segue. This was good. <laughs> I, I am being bold to put that this request actually does still remain for God's people. It does still remain. Why? Because we were talking about the temple. We are the temple. We are the temple. What if you are the temple? And I, want to, I want to mention three different ways we can view that this call still remains. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. They were willing to give to the temple, but what? How, how, how strange it is now that if I'm the temple, what implications does that have now for me? I'm the temple. And I, they were willingly given to more than what it needed. Now he lives in me and I'm the temple? What implications could that have for the believer who is now the temple of God? I want to share one of my favorite passages to this, which is 2 Corinthians. For you are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, you want to give to the temple? Come out from them and be separate. Says Yahweh, do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says Yahweh Almighty. Therefore, to your question that you asked earlier, how can we prepare ourselves to be willing vessels? This is the one that came to my mind. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Cleanse our temples. 
from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It is easier for me to give a hundred dollars than it is to do the work that this one sentence just says. I'd rather give the hundred if you're talking about effort. Because you're talking about let us clean. That was a sentence. That you just said a mouthful of a lifetime of dedication. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. That too, that and that of the flesh and the spirit? Why? We're perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Why? Why are we perfecting holiness? Because we're the temple. Of course we're going to rush to be. Now the question is not only do it, but have a willing heart to do it. Some of us may need to decide to fast from something. Some of us may need to decide to have some difficult conversations. Some of us may need to devote to prayer and to study and repenting in some ways that he says, no, if you want to build a temple, you're that temple. Willingly rush to build it. How dedicated now am I to this temple? Because as was mentioned already, I can send you a check a whole lot easier than it is to work on me. Oh, it's different. If I am the temple, my second point, my brothers and sisters are also the temples. I'm looking at God's temple sitting in front of me. So not only do I need to cleanse myself, take care of myself, and rush to make sure this place is uh, free of the fleshly and the spirit, anything like that, but I'm also now dedicated to rushing to see how can I willingly help my brothers and sisters because that's the temple of God. What do you need from me? How can I serve you? I stand up here. I print the documents, I'll make the, for me, make the slides or whatever. How can I serve? What, what conversations can I have with you? It says this in Ephesians, and he, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, the edifying of what? The body of Christ. The body of Christ is what? Still the temple. He says, my whole purpose was to, you want to build up the kingdom? You want to build up the temple? He says, your brothers and sisters are right here. I'm going to show you what I've done to build up the temple. Okay, we don't have that physical place yet, but it's right here. How am I building them up? Am I rushing willingly to have that conversation, to check on those needs, to give with an open hand? I believe God looks from this lens. I believe he looks at his temple and his temples and says, build my temple. The free will offering still is out here. How are we doing in that? I've heard that, yeah. I, I've heard that. And, yeah. And and, and this gets tough because sometimes it's muddled with some truths, but it goes too far. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. I had a friend who had had two occasions about falling, and he always asked me before the conversation was ended, what do you, what do you plan on doing? Yeah, that's a good question. You must got a friend like I got a friend like that too. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, we got that friend. Yeah, because they don't come a lot. I don't really know if I want to know what you need today. <laughs> so people won't ask that question because I don't want to know the answer to that. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, that's actually, oh, I knew he was going to say something. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see it that the great was a was it a body of believers like he is with the twelve and if they have a little hole somewhere that that's gonna affect you. Because mm. you're the you're the same boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so if we can see it that way where you know, we're in this together. Right. You know, we're as as Americans we're so in group in group. Yeah. And you shouldn't just say my father in heaven. If he said our father All right. in heaven, that's how we're supposed to pray. Yeah. Our father. Mm -hmm. We are his body. Right. And I know that there's a, you know, a heavy body, but, you know, 
important in careers for young children is also a very important part of that boat that they're on. Yeah. Because if somebody has a problem over there on their side of the boat, and this going to eventually affect them, mm-hmm. that's just a, that's good. Sort of catch all. Thank you for that, because we talked about this before, but we got to come out of the independent, because this is the way Yahweh sees his people. He talks about that edifying. I, he says, God set this up like this because he was concerned about the whole body being, the whole temple being built properly. He wasn't just thinking about, well, you got yours and you got yours. No, no, no. Everybody's positioned in a certain way to be built up. Um, yeah. Um, I know that this is God's intention. Now the churches have so many of their people that are staying home because it's easier to stay home and get gambly than watch it on the Zoom when they don't have to get out and come and, you know, have somebody need something from them and things like that. And isn't that interesting how at this time (coughs) the way that everything has gone to make and it started with dividing the church. It was not even central. A lot. So they closed those. And so the people broke their connections of each other to help each other and they were even afraid of each other. Yeah. Don't you dare hug me. Don't you touch me or any of that. So yeah. it's interesting how that all how these new churches and I, are improving. And I would say that some of these times don't make people go a different direction necessarily all the time, but I wonder how much it reveals a heart that's there. Mm-hmm. So for instance, some people stayed at home and their ministry grew. Because their heart never changed. It was like, okay, what can I do in this situation to connect with my... Matter of fact, I know some people personally who wrote books in that time because they said, okay, look, I can't do anything else. I'm going to finally write this book because this is how... It didn't stop them. It just revealed the heart. So it may not have... I ain't saying in every situation, but I wonder how God says, I'm setting you up. I want to see where we are. Mm, Yeah. That's good. That we're not judging our brothers and sisters in the church that I'm better than you and you're, um, you just need to see the light and, and you know, you're going to hell because you're not doing your job. Well, we, we're not God. We yeah. Don't yeah. No. We don't have an answer. Thanks for bringing that. We just need to have that love, like the body loves true love. Yeah. So, and you... Right. And, and, and think about the audience. This is what I brought up before. Who are they talking to all the time? Every scripture I'm talking to is like, you guys, you got, because it, yeah, disciples, people of Israel, because it's like we have so much in ourselves that we can think about and work on. So this, this scripture continues saying that we should no longer what? He says, I set it up like this so that the body of Christ can be edified. Why? that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, because there's doctrines out there. He says, I set it up like this. So to your point, Leah, can you, you do the minister, you do the teaching, you do the food, you do the, he says, why? Because I'm setting it up so that people aren't carried away by all these different doctrines that's out there. This just go here, go. I need us all working together. By trickery of men, there's some trickery of men out. How are we going to get past that? All of, all of us coming together, he says, doing that part in cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love that they may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working 
by which every part does its share. Every part does its what? Every share. Every part does its part. And he says, this is going to work. I promise you. As each part does its, to your point again, we all cause this growth of the body of edifying, building up his temple of itself in love. He's building up this, his temple, his people in love. So if you want to rush to serving his temple willingly, he says, do your part in serving each other and showing up in your gift and showing up in your part. This is another way you can rush and willingly serve. Yep. Uh, for somebody over here. Yep. If it's in the tabernacle, there were some people who were just like they had cargo, digging out corn. They didn't have very much. But the, all they could give was one little hook. That hook put together the curtain. One little tiny, and, and the enemy gets us to thinking, well, I can't do this and this and this and this. So, you know, why, when, why should I be there? I'm not a church. So when someone's missing, then that little box isn't holding on as much as it should be. And sometimes we can help them well, but, you know, we need to not allow Satan to make a mistake. Right. Right. And, I, and, and just another word, too. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be confused and by physical presence either. So sometimes people confuse unity with being together. Look, we're all unified. We're together. No, you're just together. <laughs> you're not unified. I remember a guy who had two chickens, took, got a rope to tie one leg and one leg, threw them over a wire. He said, they're unified. I mean, they're together, but they're unified. <laughs> so sometimes I, um, I was a part of a church one time where we always wanted to get together. Let's get together. Let's get together. Let's get together. But they interpreted it as unity. Um, so you can be very unified without always physical um, presence because um, that's a spirit in mind. And Paul talks about that. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. But yet, one little thing can shut the whole thing down. And trying to figure out what that one thing is, and, you know, because when you said that you know, whether it was a dowry or a tire fly or a bunch of plants or whatever the part is, you know, it goes, affects everything. Right. Yeah. It's really simple. Yeah. Talk about that because the component. So when you get down to the individual piece, right? You look at the computer, it works as an amazing system. Um, but if you get down to the individual pieces, each part has a task. <laughs> it may have the most simplest task as a transistor, transition, trans, trans, sister. Thank you. There's my knowledge. All you got to do is, what does the transistor, transistor do? That's all you got to do. It got one, it got one verb. <laughs> you just transist. Uh, insulator, what you got? I insulate. That's all I do. <laughs> You're, that's so basic. Who needs that? This computer is amazing. You just insulate? That's all I do. <laughs> you can do the same thing with a car. Look at all this car. This car is amazing. Who needs that wire? <laughs> All that wire does is. <laughs> and God knows what he's doing when he says, 
as each part does it. He says, I set it up a certain way. The question that we have to answer to ourselves is, am I being responsive with my part? Am I showing up fully in my part? I joke sometimes and say, if you're an elbow, you got two things. Bend this way and bend. That's all you got to do. You're real good at bending both of those ways. Don't have to try to be an eye to first see what's coming. Don't have to be a foot to say we should go this way. I'm just going to bend <laughs> as best as I can bend. It's like for me, I'm, I get frustrated. I've, I've been going through this for years. What do you want me to do, God? What do you want me to do? And here's the beauty, beauty thing of life. You can't do it all. That's a beautiful thing. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. He says, all you can do is this. And there's really only a few things that I'm good at. And he's given, gifted me. He says, stay right there. to get really good. Because I get frustrated. I want to do so much. I'm going to share something he shared with me uh, these last probably six months that I've been wrestling with. He said, I, I, I want to I touch people all around this country and all around the world. I have a desire to touch everybody in this world. And I've had that desire for over 15 years. I don't think it's something that I'm like, I need me, me, me. I'm like, I just want to touch a lot of people. And God has over the last six months has said to me, Brandon, this is, ho this is humbling. This is humbling. It took me a lot to get this. Some of my time when I wasn't here was dealing with this. I'm just going to be honest. He said, Brandon, what you do with that one person, that's all you got to do right there. Just that right there. If you want to really make a big, he says, I just got this one thing right there. That's all. But I want to, be, you know, Jay, you asked a question one time, but what's the most effective? How can I be the most effective with my, he says, to be the most effective, sit down and talk to that one. But surely I can get a room full of 120 people. If I get this message out, he's not, he's not listening. Did you see how many people I had? I had 12 for the whole time. <laughs> And look what I did. That ripple caused a wave, and now it's washing over everything. And yet you want you got a different plan. I got you. He says, I need you to what? Just do your one job with the system. Stop worrying about what they're gonna, this leader is gonna do, that country gonna do, this church, this. Do your job. If you teach them, then maybe you'll inspire. I don't know. Just do your job. So I'm telling you right now, whatever your part is, I hope we're not just simply taking this word and sitting in this room, and going back home, and making our lunch and dinner, and then Monday come by, we go to work, and we do the, he says, no, sh make sure you're showing up in a way you're supposed to be showing up for your, your, your brothers and sisters, even if it's that one or two. One day it may be different from me, but right now, he says, it's just here, right now, in this place, in this city, with this people. Don't worry about all that other stuff. Um, Where Benedict? They made the Lord's Prayer. But it was the will of God that they keep on, keep it on, and keep being faithful. And when the time came, Joshua took the land. Mm. Amen. That could have happened before. But let me tell you, honey, the best, the most important thing we have in this life right now is our children. Your marriage and then your girls, because I tell you, that was my desire, too. I wanted to bring all these children, but if you don't bring your own children first, then you're going to have the biggest heartbreak you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for that. Yep. Now, let me tell you, sometimes in the body, there are, uh, in the old days when people would have accidents and stuff, they would take out the spleen and stuff because they didn't know what was for and it was giving some bad purpose. And they would just take the spleen out and get rid of it, kind of like the appendix. They'll just get rid of it. Let God make it well. And then they discovered that people that didn't have a spleen, they were getting different kind of, a lot of illnesses because they don't have, it filters the red blood cells and it kills white blood cells and a lot of things. But sometimes you have people in your fellowship who you don't really see what they're doing. Yeah. You might have somebody who's busier than you could ever imagine serving in a way that, Benefits the fellowship of the family. So we, you know, we can't judge it by just what Absolutely. Absolutely. And we can't lean on our own understanding. Right. There is some, there is some, including myself, 
at times who have dismissed certain commandments because that don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, that don't make sense. What's the point of that? He said, you know, he told Moses, take your shoes off because this is holy ground. But what's the difference? I mean, it's a shoe. If you got I mean, what difference does it make this much difference between, I recommend you just do what I tell you. <laughs> I told you this is holy ground. He's not going to explain everything to me and how this is important and why I need to just do it. And, and science catches up with God. I love it. Science catches up. We're like, oh, yeah, we found that. No, you didn't find that. You've been doing that. <laughs> yeah, we... we Yeah, just go back to the beginning. Go back to the Word. Are you willing to do your part in building up your Father's temple, His body of believers? Just like they were rushing and willing, we need to also be willing. The last one here is temple ruins need to be recovered. The temple ruins also need to be recovered. What do I mean? Matthew 9, Yeshua went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the kingdom of the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He went around. Imagine him going from city to city, seeing disease, sick, hurt. And he says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. He was stared again. He was moved with compassion because the weary, uh, um, the harassed, some translations have it, and scattered. Um, they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, you're going to hear me say this a lot because I believe it's still the Father's free will request that's out there to us. The harvest is truly plentiful. It's the laborers are few. Therefore, pray that they be healed. No. Pray that they stop sinning. No. Pray that they overcome their addictions. No. Pray that they get money. No. Pray. He says, no. He says, pray Yahweh of the harvest to send out the laborers into the harvest. Because this temple is in ruins. There's more that needs to be in my temple. There's more that needs to be in my flock. I believe that there's a free will offer still out saying, here's an opportunity. Well, I did my minimum. I share with somebody. He says, well, you have the heart of David and says, but let me, I did. I just want to. There's so much work to be done. I believe that's Yeshua's heart and Yahweh's heart still to us. We are the temple individually. We are brothers and sisters of the temple, but I believe there's temple ruins that he's calling scattered. This was such a big deal that Moses even prayed that before he left, he says, may, na- may they not be like sheep which have no shepherd. Please don't leave them like this. This is a bad place, having no shepherd. What, what does that look like? People without a shepherd, what does that look like today? Everywhere. Everywhere. Anywhere, in any country. Father, orphans. Um, it could look like believers needing encouragement and leadership. They're believers. They just need encouragement. They need some guidance and some leadership. No shepherd. Feed my sheep. It could be believers <coughs> who are wandering from the truth. I forgot to put the last word. <laughs> who are wandering from the truth. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I helped me with that. Um, believers who are wandering from the truth could be those who are no shepherd. I'm talking to people... Um, now, very could be very religious, but they have no clue of what up from down. They just kind of like spiritual and good. they don't know. They're not bad people per se. They just don't. I didn't know. And they need some guidance. Christians who don't know any better. I, I was one of them. Can I boldly say I'm still one of them? Because the things I don't know, I still don't know. <laughs> There's somebody looking at me right now saying, he's so ignorant. I'm sorry, I just don't know. Somebody help me. I believe Yeshua has them in mind. People who are non-religious. They just don't have a religion, don't really care. I know a lot of people like that. People who are just biblically ignorant. I don't know. Um, Poor, widows, orphans. We can go on and on and on. He says, pray that the laborers are sent out. I pray as we close this lesson that we feel the charge to be sent out as a free will offering and building up his temple. And saying, I, we get to? Yeah, it's a call. It's still out. Laborers need it. I start to put the sign up there. Laborers need it. And he's really looking. There is a lot of seats to be filled. He says, I got work to be done. Who can I call on? Who can go out? Will you go out this week? 
Will you go out tomorrow? Will you go out in your own ways? Whatever that looks like. Summary, the heart matters to our Father, not just the actions. The condition of the heart determines the acceptance of the service. Without the right heart, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you know, how eloquent you are, how much you study, how much you attend church, Sabbath, fast. Understand we have the opportunity. It's not an obligation. The opportunity to breathe, to live, and to give to God. The temple request continues because we are the temple. Willingly keep it holy because you are the <coughs> temple. The body is the temple. So edify each other by doing your part. Let this not be the only time we're connecting. Or if we are connecting now, let's really connect and edify and build up. And then the temple is in ruins. Labor in the harvest of weary souls. That's the lesson. The heart matters to God above anything else. Thank you, guys.